Okay, let's go to another footnote here to help us out here a little bit. One of the references from, uh, from the second reference up there was the power of positive. And I had to read that thing about three or four times because it's the power of positive psychology as it applies to the DIMEC model. But in this part here, in the article in Advanced Safety Management back in 2008, they're referencing here in the power of positive, they contend that Lean Six Sigma, we haven't gotten there yet, but Lean Six Sigma often addresses practical problem solving attempts instead of contributing to new technologies, cultural needs, or the need for customization. So they're saying Lean to touchy feely here, the way I read it. It's not supporting new technologies out there. The authors go ahead and argue that because the American managers need to blame or punish someone, these improvements are doomed. Kind of sad. Yeah, it is kind of sad, isn't it? But that's what they're saying in the advanced safety management. Now, we talked about Dimex, so let's go to it. So here you're not going to be able to see this real well. But basically what this amounts to is we have five things in the DIMEC model. It's a problem-solving funnel. First, we got to define, okay? We're going to define it. What is it, what is the problem? In this case, it's really simple. Well, all we're trying to do is we're going through the analysis and our health would be better in the future and our illness we wouldn't be as sick and all this stuff if we lost some weight. I, mean, I won't ask for hands, but I know we've all kind of been there. I know I have from time to time. So basically, the defined step for this particular problem is I need to lose 10 pounds of weight. That was real hard, wasn't it? Okay, now we need to measure. The, the, the M in the DIMEC model is measure. We have to be able to measure. So in this case, we're going to use a scale, like most of us have in our bathrooms. And we're going to weigh, and we're going to go through, and we're going to do some, some analysis. And we keep wondering, well, do I need to run a, a repeatability analysis of this scale? Because we know it's, it does change a little bit from time to time. but. Let me say, now, we're interested in the overall game. We know it can fluctuate a pound a day, kind of a thing. But over the long haul, it's going to give us a trend. So now we don't need to run a repeatability analysis. And we step onto it and back off three or four times. And it only varies by a half a pound. So that's accurate enough for this job. Not for every job, but for this job. So now then. Your baseline is 192 pounds and your target weight is 182, 182 is your target weight. The scale will, is repeatable enough to handle. So we've handled define and we've handled measure. I'm using a very simple process here that you can easily understand, similar to making toast for your wife, but you gra you're getting the grasp of how DIMAC works, even on much tougher problems. Now that we do an analysis phase, and we know that our weight fluctuates by what we eat, how much we eat, when we eat it, and how many calories is in it. To make a long story short here, in this particular case, he realizes that, or this person realizes that 24% of his daily intake is the evening snack. Wrong time. Yeah. He, quarter of your calories. And 19% of it is because of the vending machine at work. Okay. Mm so almost a little less than half is a vending machine and a night nice snack. That's the analysis. And then we go to the improve. And we realize that if we didn't take any money to work with us, that cut out on the, on the vending machine problem. And we have to make sure that we get better quality stuff for the night snack with lower calories. So that's what we're trying to do here primarily. And we watch our weight. And do it going through this whole process. This is, this is the eye of the DIMEC process, improve. And then in control, we have to realize that we have to change the way we've been doing life a little bit here. 
and that's the money, no money in the pockets. You don't worry about the vending machine problem and better, better stuff. And then you watch your weight. And yeah, you, know, you have some bad. You're gonna have some off days. We all do. But we need to get back on that horse. When the horse throws, you get back on it. Because overall, it, it's a good deal we're doing. That is a brief example overview of the Dimac problem solving. From a rigorous Six Sigma standpoint, no, I'm not good, but you're getting the idea of it. So now that I don't think we got much support that Six Sigma is lean. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's a bad program. It started the same place as Lean did, but it went in different directions. Now, how about Lean Six Sigma? Well, let's look at another picture. Now, realize that there was a move, Motorola in the 1980s, GE came in and thought, wow, that's good, we'll do it too. In the 90s, and what I'm gonna show you is 2000, after we had some lean to it. But in the 1990s, GE not only implemented Six Sigma, similar to what Motorola tried to do, but they also added a whole nother layer in the bottom of the triangle. It's called direction and supporting infrastructure. Is that a help or just a hindrance? Well, I don't know. You know, let's look. You know, let's look and see. It'll go in the next one. And we added some lean stuff from the Toyota production system. So let's see here. All right, we got our triangle. This is the same old triangle we had before. In here is the green belt, black belt, and master black belt. Over here is the quality process and change management at first Dimec. There's a 3.4 parts per million. But we added in sponsors and champions and phase gate reviews and financial linkage and my goodness. Arrow those are very lean, right? Uh, we did add some lean stuff here in the 2000, this is 1990 edition. This was the Motorola part, and here's the lean stuff we added in. Plus, we added in something called DFLSS, whatever that is. What is okay. It? So now we want to ask the question: Is Lean Six Sigma lean? It's got some lean stuff in it. Let's look at this uh, rules here a little bit. Looky here. We not only have it built on the belts. Black and green belts, we've even had the Kaizen leader over here on the same level. I don't know if this means he reports to the green belt or he's on equal footing with the green belt, I'm not sure. And here we even had in team members. Darn, we figured out them team members might have some good ideas, so, didn't we? Uh oh, but on the same level as the financial rep. One of which one carries the biggest stick. And up here we had a project sponsor, process owner. So now I'm going to ask you, is Lean Six Sigma lean? Oh, wait a minute. What is some of that stuff? What does it mean? There's some things added, but what does it mean? What, what lean tools were added? They just had lean tools over there, didn't it? What is, and oh, I didn't point that out. There's even a section in there called Just Do It. What's, what's, what's that code? What's just do it? And we know that in, in the Japanese culture, Kaizen is really kind of the umbrella over all the programs when it comes to continuous improvement change. Half the job is do the job, half the job is improve the job. We don't know what it means. What does it mean here? And what the heck is DFLSS, and who's the project sponsor? Well, I took a, a review of a couple university programs and a couple corporate programs, and guess what? They all liked value stream mapping. What's not to like about value stream mapping? You can cut that paid, to, paid out to being paid by your customer. Shorten that, that's a lot nicer, isn't it? 5S, everybody likes to organize. Value added over non-value added, which equals the process control efficiency. They all like that one, which we had to buy our value stream map, right? And proactive problem solving. To solve a problem, you don't want to solve any of the symptoms, you want to get down to the bottom of it. 
You want to find the root cause and fix the root cause. Three of them added total uh, productive maintenance, Pareto analysis, pokey oak, which is mistake proofing, SME, which is single minute exchange die, we didn't talk about, but it means quick changeover. Remember the little changeover from left hand to right hand turn bracket on Acme Manufacturing? On the stamping process, we had something over an hour changeover. We cut it down to less than 10 minutes. Makes you a lot more responsive if your changeover is under some things you can do to do that. They also added facial management and Kaizen events. They had two of them, half of them added tact and cycle time. That's the, time, the speed at which you have to stuff come off in your line so you can satisfy the customer's request, right? Or needs. Face bone charts, which we're not talking about, that's part of the uh, problem solving and stuff. Where it looks like a face, here's the problem, and here's your materials and manpower and whatever types of contributors. And it's just no way of, of problem solving, the way of laying it out. And gee, some of them like Gimba or problem walks, where you walk around the floor with your facial management and so forth, and you can tell immediately if there's some problems. Yes, and, and, and the line, one of them even added five whys. That's where you ask the questions to get you on the spot down to the root cause. And maybe you can solve it right there and put temporary measures in place right there on the spot. And if it works out great, hey, it becomes standards. Uh, point of view storage, which is what we're doing back here in preparation for completing our JIT process. That's point of view storage. Put store the stuff only the stuff you need where you need it. Sell your flow. Pull systems. Let the customer get your order. Let the customer tell you what you need to build that day and then build it. Potion planning. That's kind of like mission statement planning and stuff like that. That's top level planning by the CEO and various people on a mission statement. What, what are the areas? What are the areas we need improvements in? No, there are some items here with different names that may accomplish similar tasks. But I've seen most of them before, and I think I got most of them. Okay, just do it. That's a set of daily Kaizen actions operators are allowed to make with minimum to no approval. Kaizen. That depends upon that management's interpretation. DFLSS, that's designed for Lean Six Sigma. It helps move Lean Six Sigma into the product and service design efforts in engineering and sales. So let's expanding it out a little bit. And the process sponsor or owner is typically the value stream manager in charge of turning raw materials into final products. 